Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Dan selamat sejahtera, selamat pagi. Uh, pertama sekali pada pengacara majlis, terima kasih uh, on the generous introduction. Yang bahagia Datuk uh, Mak Fauzi, <coughs> our Vice Chancellor, Timbalan-Timbalan Nek Chancellor, Barisan, uh, sorry, Prof. Sharifah, Barisan Kepimpinan UTM, eh, UTM Lead. Uh, <coughs> jadi syukur Alhamdulillah pasal tak silap saya lebih kurang 6 bulan we've been trying to set this session. So I think uh, this also happens to be my last lecture for the year because I've been giving lectures in quite a few places. This is my, uh, probably not many for you, but for me it's quite a lot. This is my 27th lecture this year and the last one um, on various things. Uh, tetapi yalah, tahun ni pun memang tahun boleh dikatakan buka pasal uh, lepas ni atau sekarang ni memang di mesyuarat Majlis Pemulihan Negara kita telah diberi taklimat berkenaan Omicron tapi dalam perjalanan daripada Kajang ke Johor pagi tadi pun uh, nasib baik Alhamdulillah lah dari sana keadaan banjirnya tak ada tapi kita pun doakanlah ramai orang susah hari ni di keliling negara eh antara uh, orang kata di <coughs> the symptoms of the so called buka apabila uh, pelawaan untuk memberi ceramah ni or syarahan ni datang uh, the first title was actually leading in ambiguous times lah. so dalam perbincangan tu i said kalau nak discuss ambiguity ni we may want to consider beyond ambiguity lah Uh, there are some specifics about VUCA, tapi this is a, a popular framework berkenaan VUCA lah, as you all sedia tahu eh. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity lah. Whatever is pening kepala, agak serabut bila kita tengokkan the kind of dissonance that is happening eh. And so today, uh, I thought I'll caption it as a practitioner's perspective lah, because a lot has been written on this subject. Uh, I'm really a practitioner. I'm not really an academic, although um, apa nama, as chairman dan sebagainya. So, jadi if I may, uh, so this is the agenda. Uh, I I would actually prefer kita dialog lah. It's very boring. Kalau just one way, there's actually a lot of materials which we, I will leave uh, with you. Uh, in fact, I think Dr. Sabrina said that again, yeah? but also to share with uh, who, whoever, I think there's those who are online. Uh, but really, there's three main things. Yang pertama, to give a bit of background context and the central thesis about VUCA. Then the first case study, which is really what I think I'm most qualified to speak about. Lah. Our time di Kazana, 14 tahun. Macam-macam uh, volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity we went through, which I'll try to explain. And I think for every penyakit or every tough situation, actually ada ubat lah. This is basically what I'm trying to say. Sometimes the ubat doesn't work all the time, uh, but not to worry. This is basically my, one, my, my central thesis is that we have to accept that VUCA happens and will probably continue to happen a lot. Uh, so rather than kita, you know, moan and groan and, and reject it, we might as well accept it. And then apa yang kita boleh buat lah. I think this is basically the key point. And then I'll try to relate managing VUCA with UTM. Uh, I think in that regard, elok juga. Uh, lecture ni 6 bulan. Kita ni pasal dalam 6 bulan yang yang telah lalu ni, saya ada peluang lah sebagai pengurusi untuk mempengurusikan mesyuarat lembaga pengarah dan juga baru-baru ni strategic retreat kita. Okay, jadi that's the outline. Then we can conclude and then we can have a discussion. Okay, this is actually the summary. Uh, yang pertama, this lecture actually is the 10th or rather the 11th lecture of a 13 lecture series. Uh, a series with 13 lectures. 
which actually started di University Technology Malaysia Kuala Lumpur pada 10 Disember 2015. So two days, two nights ago, saya text kepada Datuk Sri Zaini Ujang and also Datuk Sri Idris Juso because I think about six years ago, they asked me to be a CEO faculty member dan saya berjanji akan give a certain number of lectures. I don't think it was 13. I probably signed up for more than I had to. Uh, but my one request was if I could do this lecture throughout the country because I had a lot of requests to give lectures. Uh, and started the UTM and I intended to do UTM dua kali lah. That means di Kuala Lumpur dengan di Johor. Uh, so today Alhamdulillah, itu dapat eh, which I will explain. VUCA, as, uh, as mentioned, we will talk a bit about this, this is VUCA time. I already mentioned kita kena terima. That's my view. What is the antidote? Ada ubat-ubat dia. Basically, you have to manage the downside first. This is the way I look at things. Once you manage the downside, you build resilience, then you are ready to gain from the upside. There's always upside. As you know, famously, the Chinese word for crisis uh, representation of both crisis dengan, dengan, dengan opportunity actually. So dalam every crisis ada opportunity. Eh? And for that matter, dalam every opportunity or something yang nampaknya bagus tu is actually something brewing that can go wrong. And that's life. Eh? Uh, bila kita dalam keadaan susah, we basically got to sabar. Apabila kita senang, kita kena syukur. Jika dalam, kalau tak syukur tu, dalam lepas tu there will be some kind of musibah and so on and so forth. That, that's the nature of life. Uh, case study and then we'll talk about UTM. Uh, some of those are familiar to you. Envision, five big things, eh, Dr. Fauzi. ISIS and, and so on. Lah. So I'll try to relate and connect it back because at the end of the day, UTM lead, as I understand it, is about you all going out and making changes. Eh? Making changes, insyaAllah. Okay, ini saya ambil daripada the risk uh, department, eh, Dr. Fauzi. Uh, ini saya pinjam, eh, tak apa. Eh. Saya, I didn't credit. Uh, so I kata sini, life Kita selalu kata, life is suka duka. But better still, learn to terima vuka lah. Terima vuka. If I, if, I, if I can say that, I just want to give you a few sound bites. Eh? So, on the top, this is what people think your plans are. But this is what actually happens lah. Often eh. Often. Jadi, you, you, you better get prepared the mental frame that whatever kita plan. Of course, kalau semua smooth sailing, Alhamdulillah lah. Tak payah, don't have to worry. But in reality, we actually have to prepare for that. It's okay. This is from another lecture that I typically people invite me to talk on mega trends, actually. So each one is actually a, a topic on its own. But suffice to say, if you talk about the pace of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, technology disruption is a very big theme. Uh, we, we, we see this, eh? and you all are, you are a technology university, you know this better than me. The confluence of many technologies actually is exponential. Eh? Uh, financialization, this is my field. Indeed, financial crisis, uh, we see this, you know, multiply memang ni lah, semakin both the frequency and the amplitude. Eh? This thing has been increasing lah, banyak statistics. Inequality, this is being felt all over the world being felt here, okay? uh, the so-called post-truth society, you know, the whole uh, cyberspace has gone, uh, has exploded, geopolitics, geoeconomics, you know, big power competition, climate, of course, kita pun dah nampak, walaupun kita ingat Malaysia ni relatively okay, pun masih bencana, bencana is also hitting us with more and more frequency, eh? And demographics is still growing in many parts of the world, as you know. The world punya response seems to be there's a lot of focus, including at UTM, on SDGs, which is good. SDG in Japan is basically a way of looking at the world that tries to look at a lot of those issues. Uh, tetapi, you know, arguably, for example, in the world of business, they try to translate this into ESG. Okay. You heard about ESG. Eh? So the, the ESG movement is good. On the other hand, countering that, actually there's a movement around what they call greenwashing. Eh? So banyak yang 
yang hanya you know uh, lepaskan batuk di tangga that kind of thing lah and or worse they doing it for tax reasons and so on and so forth so basically i'm trying to explain uh, we live in buka times there are so called movements to try and counter this but the truth of the matter is that there's always contestation of going two step forward one step back and this is the nature of things lah that's why it's buka Uh, ni yang saya sebut tadi. So, you know, basically a, 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 a short essay that I wrote back in 2015, actually 2013 lah. At that time, it was 10 ideas. It was for a, 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 a credit Swiss conference in Hong Kong lah. They wanted, people wanted to know. Uh, by that time in 2013, Alhamdulillah lah, it was obvious that Kazana was beginning to show the results we claimed we were going to do. At that time, almost 10 tahun eh, of our work, and people ask, "Can you put? You know, how did you get there?" Lah? So, so we started putting down in the realm of ideas. Okay, uh, I won't go through in detail because each one of them had become the subject of a of a lecture in itself. Uh, as I mentioned, kalau I, I hope you can see that number one, the first one was actually the UTM. Uh, the inaugural lecture for this whole series. So I, actually, it's a baker's dozen at the Tiga Blast for two of ideas. The first one is an overview. Kemudian each one, uh, I went around the country lah, uh, and tried to match juga. Lah. So for example, bila bab innovation, I landed up in Multimedia University di Melaka, bagai contoh. Uh, when it came to finance, uh, because of we were looking at sensible or Islamic finance, or I did it at UIA and so on and so forth. Eh? Uh, jadi, this idea actually, uh, if I can go back, I, I can group under our tagline of building through value, we said that we tried to group this into three groups, in, and they're color-coded, eh? in green, in blue, dengan in uh, orange. Basically, our tagline is saying, you must get your mandate right. So you have to be clear, that what is your mandate? What is it that you're supposed to do? What is your strategy? What is your mission? What is your vision? Because this is you punya hala tuju that everybody gathers around under, right? So the first thing, A, do, kita kata, doing the right things is important. Because sometimes people do things well, but they're not doing the right thing. Does that make sense? Which, then the second part, once you do the right things, you must do the right things right. Meaning, meaning be efficient, you know, be savvy, be clever, be whatever lah, in whatever you do. But the third part, actually, you do the right things, you have to choose what are the things you need to do. You do it well, you do it right, but you must do it in the right way. Doing it in the right way means, among other things, you have to be fair in your dealings. Not always the case. Eh? Macam it was written more for the business world. So obviously, in, in the academic world, for example, I suppose academic reputation, you know, one obvious one about integrity is, you know, no plagiarism and so on and so forth, right? How, how you arrive at your, your research work, bagai contoh. Or indeed, how you deal with your teaching with students, for example. So for us, we felt that uh, if you take, uh, for example, in terms of mandate, we had to be clear. Uh, di Kazana dulu, kita kata, kita ada dua kunci. The first key is... We have to make money. We are in an investment house. We are not a charity. Eh? We are not there to only. We have every year. We have to produce more than we we spend. You know, and Alhamdulillah, lah, over time we actually more than treble, almost quadruple the portfolio uh, without money coming in. Eh, by the way, but at the same time, uh, we we had to do all of that while making sure that the second key is we had to also come up with developmental outcomes for the country actually so for example what what are you doing to create jobs uh the 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 joho for example uh, i used to come a lot to spend a lot of time to develop iskandar malaysia that was our job so there are easy i mean alhamdulillah lah, we, we made you know we made profit suppose not the iskandar tetapi there's probably easier ways to make money than to develop iskandar lah, because there's a lot of work to coordinate to create jobs Tago infrastructure, you know, negotiate industrial clusters, etc. Right. Uh, so this is basically reflects the philosophy. Uh, 
hopefully, inshallah, so after this lecture, there will be two more lectures. And hopefully by, uh, perhaps, tengoklah keadaan by middle or certainly by next year, I hope to complete the rest, to complete the whole series. Lah. And, you know, inshallah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think I need to go in detail. This is a bit of a busy slide. There's a lot of busy slides. It's meant for reference. They're all slightly different. Eh? I think it's fair to say that bila we talk about VUCA, eh? complex, volatile, ambiguous, uncertain, uh, I think the word I've chosen here is dissonance. Lah. I mean, kacau lah. I got serabut. Again. So, and people will tend to react that when this happens, people are stressed out, people are ni, you know, gabra and so on and so forth, right? Uh, as I said, there is risk, but there's also opportunity. But recognize, when you start recognizing that each one is slightly different. For example, um, the thing with volatility is cause and effect. You kind of know lah. You know, for example, bila hujan banyak, it will result in, you know, air naik and in some low-lying areas, you get floods, right? So this is no, known cause effect. Now, bila hujan, that's perhaps the uncertain part. How much hujan, that's perhaps the volatility, right? So it's not really complex in that sense. It's not really ambiguous. It's not really un uncertain, but it, it is actually, we know that it's, 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 it's volatile. Sorry, uncertain, you, you kind of know like, because timing, or, sorry, it is uncertain because of timing in that sense. Yeah? So, so one way to understand VUCA or dissonance and to prepare, if you accept that dissonance is going to happen in whatever your field of work, then you have to prepare. Because ramai orang punya reaction is when it's more is moan and groan and other yang panic dan sebagainya. No. You, you have to accept dalam dunia ni bila actually ada tempat tak ada dissonance nama dia syurga lah we got to go through this world first to get there right that's the whole point you have to go through all this musibah etc yeah? that, that's that's the test so 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 my my point is we have to embrace and accept here are some approaches so tadi kita dengar pasal buka so there's this guy i don't know who this guy is but somebody quoted him dr bob johansen of the institute which dia he coined this phrase buka prime so they kata, uh, ni, you know, he used the word V-U-C-A pun. You must have vision, you must have understanding, you must have clarity, and you must have agility lah. Okay lah, it's a, it's a list of of things of uh, another way of looking at it. The one on the left, actually, saya, I just listed out what, you know, my from my experience. For example, to fight volatility, as I mentioned, kalau you are clear what your strategy is and your mandate, you have organizational flexibility, eh, is the agility. Kalau in finance, like you put financial hedges. Financial hedges means, you know, you, you can hedge against the price of certain things. Hedge, eh? you can speculate. Kalau speculate, dah, dah masuk bab. Speculation, like, that's a bit different. You can do stress testing, actually. Macam di Kazana, sometimes we ask, okay, this particular case, berapa torpedo? It, it's, it's a phrase. Lah. How many torpedoes can, can our investment take? Satu, dua, tiga? Usually you can take, so, so then you define like, what the hell is the torpedo, it's, it's a big event, you know, uh, you know, so, and so on, right? And then preparedness, uncertainty, for example, you don't know which, then scenario planning comes in. I've invited my uh, old friend, actually, because we've been meaning to catch up, Encik Izani Ashari, if, if I can introduce, because Anna, he was our chief transformer, quote unquote, he was my executive director, but actually you should know, not just Kazana, eh? Cik Izani was a key member of my team, but he was also a key member of the team of Tan Sri Hassan Marikan di Petronas, Datuk Sri Idris Jala di Malaysia Airlines. Uh, and then also, I think uh, Cik Izani also advised people like uh, Teraju, uh, Pemandu later. Lah. So very key conciliary. And, and, and basically, among other things, Cik Izani in your background is Shell. And Shell is world famous for scenario planning. So you look at all you look at all these scenarios. So the Kazana, for example, we always have, you know, what we call a a a, 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 a base case. So there's there's actually four cases: like a base case, a bear case. Bear means you're negative. A super bear that means really tall. And then we look at a bull case. A bull case is a bullish case. Eh? And then there's actually another case, like, I selalu test, it's called the bullshit case, like, ini kadang-kadang dia boleh-boleh-boleh, so kena test for, so usually we have four official ones, 
And the basic logic is, if you can handle the bear case, or even the super bear case, you will live. Lah. Generally, you will live. Eh? And then you work all out to try and get your, 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 your bull case study, right? That means a more bullish case, a more positive case. So, tapi, fine. If you, if you are at the base case, is what you do for your forecasting. Eh? So, if you think about that, that methodology, you're basically managing downsides and you're trying to make sure that your, your budgets and the way you go out is actually handling, so Allah, Allah, you are base case, but you can uh, surprise on the upside. In life, you always should uh, uh, promise not so much, perform more than you, what you promise, lah, rather than the other way around. Eh? So I'm just sharing, you know, what practical experience that we've done. Uh, in, in complexity, pula, it's about understanding interdependencies. So if you draw a network diagram, you know, A goes to B, B affects C or D at the certain sequence. If once you understand this, uh, that's why sometimes you cannot move yet, actually. So those of you who play, you know, chess or Go even more so, it's basically like a network sequence game. Eh? So you, 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 you need to understand this. Uh, sometimes you think, oh, it's overwhelming, banyak sangat notes. But actually, when you, you step back, then you understand that a pattern will emerge. I think this is basically how you handle complexity. Those of you who are into systems thinking, I think they have, they have a specific approach of doing these things. Uh, one way is actually to simplify because complexity, normally complexity, people don't like because it's complex, right? it's difficult to do. Uh, I think my staff knows lah. I think then it's fair to say I like complexity. So complexity, if you think about it, orang lain tak boleh buat, that's your field. Kalau you boleh buat, that's actually your area. Actually, orang lain tak boleh compete. Uh, if you think about it, of course, it takes a lot to you know you, you have to assemble uh, certain capabilities to do this. For example, knowledge management. You have to have the best people actually to do to do to do complex stuff. Ambiguity, uh, and by the way, some of this input is from Cik Izani. Uh, we, 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 we mentored a group of UTM lead to the GEMS, uh, GEMS program, uh, that's what it's called. So the wisdom of crowds, for example, when you're, when you're in a situation you're ambiguous, things are not clear. Uh, is it ni ke ni ke? It's not, it's slightly different than uncertainty. Uh, but then it's ambiguous. Orang punya intention were not so clear. There is something to be said about wisdom of crowds, actually. If you're more inclusive, you dapat different points of view. I don't know, maybe many of you will know this better. Kan? Rahmat is turun in the middle. Eh? It tends to fall in the middle. This is where the wisdom of crowds. Lagi banyak kita discuss, if the discussion is open, sincere, inshallah, I think you, you will somehow get some clarity. Lah. I suppose that's a kind of barakah. Eh? So being collaborative, for example, character. Uh, I picked this up in UTM actually. Uh, spiritual quotient. I think this is what you all call SQ, right? So there's IQ, there's EQ, uh, there's uh, uh, resilience quotient, pun ada, but spiritual quotient. I think this is actually should be the weapon, eh, among other things. Okay. So, bottom line from, from for me, as I step back a bit in doing this lecture, Apa yang really matter? Later you will see lah what, what kind of complexity we and others had to go through. I think, and in some sequence, yang pertama, I think this word integrity, sometimes a little bit cliche, eh? banyak orang guna integrity, integrity. I mean, you all, uh, you know, this is a technology university. I mean, an integer, among other things, mean their whole, right? You tak boleh pecah-pecah, it's an integer. It's about being true, being wholesome, being whole, actually. A class is part of it. So I think if you don't have this, very difficult to handle all this buka buka. Ni. So this you must protect at all costs, my view. Di Kazana or whichever organization, I get it for, for other things, mana kelemahan, ke gaps, I, we, we the leaders, all of you, should have the most patience to help people actually. Because that's our job, right? We are here to serve. To serve others, actually. To kerja kita. Sebagai pemegang, you know, as whoever's holding the leadership. Which is your job. Our job is actually to help others. But when it comes to integrity issue, frankly, this one tiada, tiada maaf. Eh? Because ni cerita integrity. Tak boleh. Gosak ke tidak? Honestly. So, so that one first. What is good governance? 
governance, when people hear the word governance, people often think about itu tak boleh, ini tak boleh, something that is more defensive. That is true, partly. But think of governance as a coin that actually has two sides. One side says comply. That means other rules you can comply. The other side says perform. So compliance and performance is the two sides of the same coin called governance. Actually, Remember that because sometimes getting that balance is not easy. Eh? So you go to organization, sometimes itu tak boleh, semua tak boleh, orang pun give up lah. You know, this is uh, terlampau, apa, terkongkong, eh? they cannot do anything. Or you go to another organization, semua boleh. Or kebanyakan boleh, ini boleh and they become reckless, they forget apa semua, last life accident. Okay? So think about, uh, you know, a car, I'm not really into cars. My friends who are into cars tell me, the apa nama, the, the stronger the car, the more powerful, you know, kereta mahal lah kan, I suppose, but not necessarily mahal. But if the car is in good shape, etc., that means banyak dia punya control, you can perform better because you're more confident. Same analogy. A compliance system, a good compliance system gives you basically a safety net to allow you to be able to do triple sama salt. Nampak eh? Kalau you tak ada tu, you tak boleh buat ni. Ha, tapi kalau you buat ni, without ni, pun tak boleh. So actually dia apa, macam aur dengan tebing lah. You need both. Because a lot of people think when they think governance, they see lah, oh ni tak boleh tu, tak boleh. Nanti risk management datang, compliance datang. Not necessarily. It's about getting the balance. So the best compliance officers are the, uh, know that what is required for the business, what you need to go forward. And the best people who are doing deals, for example, in investment yang buat ni semua, they understand why you need compliance. They tak complain. They know that's actually your friend, actually. So you must have that mindset. People is a cliche. People truly matters. Again, lah, just slightly philosophical. If you think about it, everything in creation, so more follow set pattern. Lah. Whether environment, ke, the, the wildlife, animal life, ke, I mean, you know better physics, ke, chemistry, biology, except the only thing that's been given a free will is kita, lah, manusia. So manusia ni, you buat A, you dapat B, tapi besok you buat A, maybe you dapat C. It depends. Because because dia dia tak tak we 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 human we 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 change we can you know we can be a bit fickle. Therefore, this is the greatest variable, and therefore how we conduct ourselves and leadership in that regard eh, is extra critical. Eh? I mean that that's a cliche. Knowledge, you know this even more because this is a gedong ilmu, but not just any knowledge. Obviously, useful knowledge ilmu manfaat, and then institutions. Institution. What is an institution? I'll talk a little bit more kejap lagi. Because institution, basically what it says is that you create a set of rules, uh, processes, structures, procedures, whereby bila you buat tu, dia tak, tak kira orang tukar ke, masa tukar ke, you will still get repeatability and consistency. This is important. Of course, Repeatability and consistency based on what is yang betul lah to serve you know the business or the organizational need. This is important. We don't want bila you go to a place or a country that di mana you know you approach a government department or a particular application process, you don't know the outcome. Uh, let alone you know yang yang nak kena bribe orang apa semua ni kan. So an institution that when you have an institution uh, set up, then you have trust. You have you know you have repeatability and consistency uh, and efficiency in that sense. Eh? And that trust actually engender more what is called social capital. That social capital then creates, you know, then you are into a virtuous circle, right? The opposite of also holds, uh, i.e. if you don't have that, then you begin to, every, a lot of things break down. That's why the power of institutions means tukarlah orang mana, tukarlah the leader, but doesn't matter. This goes on. Eh? And, and we, we know this. And UTM, you know, Kazana, I tried to build this, you know, as an institution. We have, Alhamdulillah, in Malaysia, you know, institutions like Petronas, Bank Negara, PND, ETF, you know, they, they've been out there. Once in a while, they, they may go through periods of trouble, but they're resilient because they have built an institutional base. We must do this to protect, and we always protect institutions rather than any individual is the team. Uh, culture. Culture is 
I, I note dalam the five big things eh? uh, Dato' Faldi and I'm sure the previous VC Dato' Wahid and Dato' Zaini So a lot of people talk about culture At the end of the day, what is culture? Culture ni to me, and there's a saying lah Culture eats strategy for breakfast Because some people kata, oh you must get the strategy right Mesti you dapat strategi betul pun Kalau your culture tak betul, you tak boleh execute You may be able to win one or two battles, but you won't win the war generally. Eh? The things you break down, but they sustain. But culture, in my view, can be said to be values in action. Culture reflects what an organization stands for. And one usual test is what is it that you celebrate and reward. So reward is not necessarily just money. It can be recognition. It can be uh, many things. Lah. Here, recognition and so And what is it that you sanction against? What is it yang you memang tak berkenan? Memang, you know, everybody will shun and sanction against this. That is that is really your your culture. Uh, for example, di Kazana, I tried hard and with me and my colleagues, among other things, we said we must be intrapreneurial. I don't know, a bit of a long word lah. Kita institution, so we're not really entrepreneur. Tetapi dalam tu, you must take risk. You must, you know, you must be brave enough. Don't hide. Eh? must always do things. Uh, another one is being collegiate. Lah. So we, we really try to practice, you know, collegiality. Lah. Maksudnya, that means, you know, we are like a band of brothers and sisters that we really try to know. We, we don't necessarily agree. In fact, very fierce, uh, fiercely strong views, actually. This is important. So kita defend kita ni. Uh, jadi your culture, actually, your culture will determine what kind of army you are. And actually, I try to build a team yang mana tak kira lah, I don't know what kind of war is going to come because the this is part that buka tadi tetapi you know that your 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 troops will be able to handle most situations why? because your culture is strong uh, there's something called MVSV, mission, vision, strategy and values and then the the 3P is policy, procedure and so on lah and the organization, jadi okay and finally uh, spiritual caution lah so this one of course UTM, mashallah, I think the roots are strong, I believe. Uh, and bila saya, I'm trying to, you know, I'm learning still, but clearly the foundations by Tan Sri Ainuddin Wahid and lain-lain, eh, kerana Tuhan untuk manusia, is such a beautiful motto. And we must, you know, hidupkan, meriah, apa, semarakkan that motto, right? There's of course a lot of rich lessons on the Quran and Hadith, on managing buka, for example, In Surah Yusof, as you know, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, kan? So preparedness, eh? tujuh tahun, tujuh tahun, eh? so they tahu bila kan ni, I mean that's many more. Uh, again, for me, I just wanted to share, sometimes I share with my staff ini, I belajar dari my ustaz lah. Dia kata, manusia ni ramai cari duit. Manusia ramai cari duit. Ah, betul tu, dia kata. Okay, kamu terkejut lah. Ah, elok cari duit. Duit tu stands for, dia kata, Empat huruf ni lah. Uh, not necessarily in this order. Eh? But you think about it, right? Doa. Actually, you start dengan ni lah. Usha, ikhlas, tawakal. So, you start dengan niat yang ikhlas. You kena usha. So, a lot of professionals like myself, we spend hell of a lot of time on the usha part lah. Macam-macam buat spreadsheet lah, scenario planning lah, analysis, etc. Tapi kadang kita lupa doa. Betul tak eh? And then bila dah habis tu, we forget to tawakal. And this is actually the biggest ubat to don't stress actually. Once you've done your best, you've done niat dah betul, ikhlas, you dah usaha mati-mati, you know, we are asked to usaha, right? Sempurnakan whatever you're doing. Uh, and then you must doa. Sometimes we forget lah. I also forget lah sometimes. Right? And then tawakal. That tawakal is a huge stress reliever actually. Today, mental health is actually at You know, pandemic, right? Around the world. Uh, when I became chairman, I selalu tanya, Dr. Fauzi, Dr. Razib, you know, how are the, or how lewat pelajar, how students, right? But also staff. That's our job, right? To make sure ni. Jadi, so, so this duet principle, I think, is very powerful lah, if you think about it. So, kita ada, this should be our secret weapon, not not so secret weapon lah, it's our weapon. The tawakal bit, eh, actually. So why why worry? Because if you've done all that, you know whatever happens is probably the best thing, you know, yeah. or will be the best thing. Okay.
Okay, this is very busy slide. It's actually from a board retreat. Di Kazana, after about five years I was there, uh, kita somewhat infamous lah, Zani, eh? that our work, working culture and hours were going crazy lah. I mean, the hours were, were even in the corporate world, it was kind of infamous. Lah. But I said, that's it lah. The, the, the energy and the fervor of the founding group of that, that, that transformation work tak boleh sustain. So we needed to, uh, we were younger lah at that time. Eh? We were younger, blah, 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 and, 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 and then, you know, get support of your family or whatever. But we, we, we put in this thing called the KIP, Kazana Institu Institutionalization Program. I hired a gentleman by the name of Jif. Mr. Jif Samantan was running uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers in a consulting division with almost 200 consultants. I said, Jif. You're doing too good of a job. Come and do whatever you're doing, but only for Kazana. I need you. Uh, and actually, after I left Kazana, he also left Kazana. We both of us we form our own little company in the in the Middle East. Uh, since people want to hear our views, uh, to, uh, consulting uh, for for clients, this and that. Uh, but this is actually he led this, but it was throughout the whole organization. Che Izani played a big part in a lot of this thing. Essentially, banyak tu lah kalau nak kupas ni. But actually, it's about in integrity and governance multiplied by people and leadership multiplied by knowledge. Uh, I mean, kalau nak, nak, nak deep dive boleh later, but you know, me. So, I wanted to say that, and integrity already covered, why integrity is important. Governance, I think I covered, and these are some of the principles. Again, eh, some of this, uh, quite lebat, the, the slides is there for your reference if you, you want to read later. Uh, but culture, actually, yeah, this, this I wanted to maybe spend a bit of time. Uh, I already mentioned about the corporate culture statement, entrepreneurial, collegiate, knowledgeable, responsive, adaptive. In a lot of places, frankly, ni semua memang slogan lah. But we really try to do that. And sometimes you do that by what actually happens in practice. And like in any organization, any tribe, Dia ada dia punya ritual-ritual tertentu lah, Dr. Fauzi. Sini, we just went through your convo eh. So, convo tu ada rhythm dia, ada apa semua ni kan. Cara dia buat convo, macam mana ada. That's normal. Uh, so, for us too, we have, you know, obviously, town hall lah, family day lah. Uh, kita ada something called the Kazana Mega Trends Forum. That's basically our networking event. And once you do things regularly, as you know, bila you continue to, then, then this thing actually shapes uh, the people and it shapes the organization. And then there are some so-called rules that have become part of the mythos of any organization. Kena ada dia punya mythos. Eh? Bukan aja dia punya ethos, tetapi dia punya mythos. Actually. And dia punya logos. Actually. Logos is the logic of the organization. The logos, the ethos is the ethics of an organization, but they must have their own stories. Eh? UTM, I'm sure, ada, ada you punya story. Right? So, for example, the Kazana. There's something called the elephant rule. What is the elephant rule? If you come into my office dulu, ada staff elephant, gajah kecil tu, actually daripada hotel kat Sri Lanka lah, somehow it landed on my table. Once it was there, somehow kena pula kat situ, saya biar je situ. And it would sit on on a, on a speaker phone, Cik Zani tahu lah, yang speaker phone yang flat tu kan, macam spider phone they call it. So bila orang masuk, Sometimes just to break the ice, I will ask lah, do you know what that is? So kadang they like, pelik, ni trick question ni kan? Last lah kan, one or two, not one or two lah, quite a few are very smart and they say, oh, that's the elephant in the room. Then, then gelak lah, gelak, gelak, gelak. I kata, no, 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 yes, but that's the only elephant in the room. Lagi gelak. Maksudnya, you're free to talk whatever lah. You know, let's talk. There's no, no other elephant in the room. This is the only elephant in the room. Ah, itu dah jadi cerita lah, you know. After a while, people know already lah. And sometimes people datang, orang dia orang dah warn lah. Tan Sri will ask about the elephant in the room, okay? So that you know. <laughs> then I don't know whether it's to work. Then there's something called the five-minute rule. What is the five-minute rule? I learned this from Hassan Marikan, actually. Then, I didn't remember, we, we invited him for a quiet talk. He didn't quite call it the five-minute rule. But the five-minute rule basically states, the only way to work at a place like Kazana, you can imagine, Kazana ni banyak gula. Bila banyak gula, banyak semut. Macam-macam, everybody wants a piece. 
Kazana. It's not my Kazana. It's, it's everybody's Kazana, right? Kita kena protect, kita kena grow. So the five-minute rule basically states the only way you can work in this place is to be five minutes away from being sacked or resigning. On the matter of principle, lah, bukan kita suka-suka nak resign. We don't like to, to get sacked, obviously, so we want to do our job once we're in the job. And this is important because that means you tak takut. That means you buat, kata, it's okay. You know? and, and after a while, it's known, actually. And it's not just me, right? If I go, you know, many others will go too, right? Then all for one, one for all. Among that, that was the system. To the point that, to Alhamdulillah, lah, if I may speak freely here, which, which we always do anyway, kalau you buka buku The Billion Dollar Whale, uh, I don't know the author, but the author sent me a copy through a friend. Dia tulis tu, Dear Azman, congratulations, page 43 is for you. So, kalau you buka muka surat 43, I think 43 ke 42, roughly lah. That's the part where apparently Jolo marah sangat dengan saya dan Kazana because we refused to play ball. He wanted something and we told, we basically told him to jump in the lake lah. And then the author says, Tom, apa nama Tom Brady, you don't know what his name, the, the author says, Kazana is run by professional, blah, blah, blah. And Joe was incensed. So they guna the word incensed. Incensed ni terbakor, eh? terbakor, lebih daripada marah. And therefore, after that, the next chapter, therefore he, he needed his own sovereign fund. So bila kawan-kawan saya baca tu, dia kata, see, kalau you agree dengan dia, YMDB tak jadi tau. I kata, I kata pandai kamu. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the five-minute rule uh, is one rule, and so on lah, and so on. There's there's, there's a lot more. Uh, so called ni dalam kalau you baca yang yang 2015 punya essay the one that I gave ini dalam tu ada a few more lah. There's there's quite a few more. So this is actually if you think about it, this kind of rules or mythos ni is part of storytelling. Every organization, institution, or culture. Datuk Fauzi, eh, macam ni, the story of macam mana Tan Sri Anuddin dapat kerana Tuhan untuk manusia, right? So I, I, I baca dekat masjid, dekat apa, outside masjid ni, eh? start with UTM, untuk Tuhan dan manusia. Oh, beautiful. So, bila you dengar story ni, you can almost imagine, imagine, you know, Tan Sri, saya pun tak pernah jumpa, tapi saya boleh imagine lah. Storytelling is important, eh? you must have your own storytelling, that's how cultures are built. Okay, this is an example. We are not a university, but we embrace this thing called knowledge management very early, I would say. Perhaps, I don't know, my own background, I came from investment research the, in the financial world. Memang, I was head of research at Solomon, etc., etc. Saya pun, you know, I somehow, apa, ada, apa nama, other intention pergi buat master dan sebagainya lah. I mean, if you look at my little CV, somehow, I, it's a bit eclectic lah, kejap buat Islamic studies, kejap buat this, partly because of curiosity, partly because of need, you feel you need that. But we felt that we use knowledge as both an ends and a means in itself. Uh, so, uh, sorry, a means and an end in itself. Eh? So, so knowledge, yeah, of course, ilmu, of course, ilmu yang berguna, and over time, we develop all these linkages, but we also created, for example, tak ada orang suruh buat kazana research itu kita buat. Partly because there were gaps, and actually we were already, government knew that we had people, and they would come and ask, can you help with this, can you help with that. That's why I kata, we, we better institutionalize lah. Kita buat a whole institute, yang ni concentrate on macroeconomic research, focusing on the issue of inequality, big issue. Uh, frankly, a lot of this the government should be doing, tetapi diorang pun for whatever reason lah, there's constraint, tak cukup orang, tak cukup funding, uh, we were able to do and now we work closely and actually things independently of government. Walaupun ada linkage lah, obviously, eh, sebagai contoh. Okay. Leadership, uh, this is from a presentation I gave to UTM lead. Uh, you know, this is a separate lecture on its own. Lah. But suffice to say that leadership, uh, in fact, the title of this lecture is Leading in Buka Times. So my own thoughts about leadership boleh dikupaskan to five things. Lah. Leadership is a journey. Uh, we have a duty to grow and develop as leaders. Leadership is actually about stewardship. 
not just leadership. It's not about leadership. In fact, leadership is also about followership. To be a good leader, you have to be a good follower first, actually. And then you can be a good steward. Steward to apa? Pemegang amanah, actually. Right? Uh, which means understanding purpose and understanding and, and how to do this with balance. Lah. I think these are from, from lectures yang kadang orang invite to talk about leadership specifically. Lah. And of course, uh, this is from a group talking. Uh, these are some of the various ayat-ayat Quran lah, because we talk about spiritual quotient. Eh? So this is the section about the ubat-ubat ni tadi, eh? how to overcome buka, right? And indeed, the, this next slide, this, this can move. Okay. Ni, actually, I sengaja taruh surah tu bakarah ayat, uh, ayat 282, if I'm not mistaken, is actually, oops. It's actually the longest ayat in the whole Quran. Eh? And it's not a coincidence. This is the ayat about how you have to be very detailed and careful in doing financial transactions, actually. Teliti dan cekap dalam bidang. Okay, dalam. Anyway, so. Sorry, this thing is. Okay, anyway, that, that was just the first section. I think I better do a time check. Uh, okay, so to recap that section, as I said, buka is a fact of life. In fact, if you look at the mega trends, buka will probably increase. If it doesn't, bagus. Tapi kalau you tengok climate ke, you tengok inequality, economics ke, financial turbulence lah, stock market lah, cryptocurrency lah, macam-macam eh. You tengok tension, you tengok migration, macam-macam crisis lah, serabut. But, it's a fact of life and and all trends are showing it will probably increase actually. So, so what can we do actually? So my, the point is I said we, we better embrace. But there are techniques and antidotes about how to handle this. In fact, if you do it well, you just don't, first you manage the downside. There will be opportunities because other people probably, sadly even, may not be handling it well. In fact, this was our stock in trade di Kazana. Lah. Sometimes, uh, for example, one of the first acquisitions we did was to acquire Lipo Bank di Indonesia. Bagai contoh. Eh? So Lipo Bank was headed by the Riyadis, very famous business family di Indonesia. In fact, their family known to be extremely shrewd, uh, capable, but also they went into some controversy. For example, they were caught not, well, the kawan juga lah, tapi they, they were caught not only uh, supporting President Suharto in terms of political funding, but also Bill Clinton, uh, if you, if you, the gov when he was governor of Arkansas. So you can you imagine this at that level. So, but that was the only bank left that we needed to expand, CIMB to, to go regional. Very complex transaction actually. Memang kena bersilat ni. But because of that actually, ramai orang lain tak berani masuk or tak boleh masuk. So that complexity became you know, our opportunity actually. To be honest, if it's easy, there's probably about 10, 12 bidders. We may still win, but our chances was also, also tough lah. Uh, as an example. Eh? So complexity, volatility, is not, if you're prepared, can actually be you punya rezeki actually. This is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so think about situations, later we'll talk about UTM, di mana, you know, for example, kita ada UTM space di Kuala Lumpur, kita ada, you know, technical punya ni, kita ada IT, sekarang ramai orang, sekarang the online, and then, you know, our graduate employability is better, the numbers is 90 plus percent, kita ada brand, kita ada, you know, campus di, apa nama, di Kuala Lumpur, orang boleh datang, and post-COVID or even during COVID, there are lost years. You all know this better. But maybe we can provide a product yang mana orang boleh and we have to link that dengan industry to do your nano degrees, kan? Yang, yang apa, what do you call those? Yang kecil-kecil tu, -kecil what do you call? 
micro credentials micro credentials right for example okay, that then maybe orang lain boleh buat juga tapi maybe we are better position to do that because kita dah ada building block macam you main scrabble lah you dah ada all the right alphabet right that you can sambung to 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 get your triple word score kupang kupang apa semua ni okay kazana macam mana ni I, i will go through lah quickly so i think to with this audience i don't think i have to explain too much uh often called strategic investment fund so when i left uh, it was about 157 billion alhamdulillah when i joined it was about 50 billion so i think we 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 trebled it and one thing to note di kazana dia kita ni santan dia panggil sovereign wealth fund but actually not quite true because usually orang kata sovereign wealth tu three things yang pertama what they call natural resource wealth usually minyak lah So minyak doesn't come to us. It goes to Petronas, our landlord. I'm not complaining. I'm just stating. Eh? So duit minyak tak masuk. Secondly, sometimes in some countries, they channel what they call the foreign exchange reserves of the country for the sovereign fund to manage. So, so the China, for example, a proportion goes to uh, China Investment Corp. The Korea, a, a, a proportion goes. Eh? The Malaysia, it goes and or rather it remains and managed by Bank Negara. It's okay. It's well managed, actually, by and large. Uh, the third source, like in Norway, for example, in other places, is basically the pension, the intergenerational wealth, is sent and and being managed by the sovereign fund. Again, doesn't come to us. It's managed by EPF mostly, but also people like Coop, uh, Kumpulan Wang Amanah Pension, eh? or for armed forces by LTAT dan sebagainya. So what do we have actually? We started with a bunch of companies. Many were bombed out after the 1998 in the crisis. Eh? Uh, termasuklah companies like Renong and so on and so forth. You know, good assets or rather strategic asset, but a lot of debt. Eh? Banyak banyak hutang that we had to restructure. So people like me, you know, this is my field, eh? you know, corporate restructuring and so But also we had companies macam like Tenaga, Telecom, that were traditional government departments. They were utilities. Some of them were monopolies or natural monopolies. What do we do? We had to transform this, create value, jual sikit because we needed cash flow lah. We cannot sell all because these are strategic companies. Eh? And then create new companies. Uh, sometimes we go and buy, for example, we created Integrated Healthcare, IHH, which owns Glen Eagles, apa semua ni. Uh, you know, from not, practically nothing that became uh, the second largest listed healthcare company in the world, actually. Uh, with about 15 billion US dollars in market cap, eh? as an example. Alziata, you know, uh, not just di Malaysia, tapi it began, it went out to something like 10 countries and sebagainya, uh, and so on. Okay, so we, but this is part of that complexity. What is success for Kazana? Kita kata yang pertama, you have to deliver financial return, the first key tadi. The second key is, this sec actually there were three keys, lah. I talked about two keys, but there's a third key. The second key is the strategic returns. Okay? Uh, what you're doing to, 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 to create jobs, for example, national projects, developing regional champions, building knowledge and human capital. These are all strategic things that doesn't necessarily translate into financial terms, eh? but important. But we also had a third key, which is to give societal returns, corporate responsibility, social inclusion, the thinking part, support government policy formation benun-benun je ni eh? this is part of our job so again i leave you this numbers is there lah uh, roughly about three and a half x over that period the economic returns i quoted about iskanda but there were also many other sectors that we developed and societal returns and just to illustrate lah here are some busy slides from our own strategy and uh, research team that reflect the complexity at Kazana is out the mandate because as, as mentioned what usually in organizations they either focus on just making money for example that's it okay complexity you simplify or they focus on uh, you know economic development they talk isau sangat about about financial returns eh? or they are like more of a charity or a, or a, or a yayasan they focus on the third part we have to somehow balance all three lah so it's pretty complex in that sense and the complexity is not just at kazana but at the 
Khazanah tu hanya 450 orang. Eh. But underneath there, there's about 100 companies with about 250,000 people. Uh, big names lah. UEM, Tenaga, Aziata, Airport, and so on, Malaysia Airlines. So these are very complex. They themselves have got a lot of complexity in their operations by geography, by the sector, regulation, technology, disruption, unions, macam-macam. Uh, yeah, this is again more reference. So what really matters, as I said, get the mandate right, it's a long game. Get the capacity building and drivers right. Get the execution right. So one of the things is uh, what, what, what I call transformation acupuncture. You cannot do everything, okay? So you got to pick your, your spot. So the, the, the GLC in your story, for example, we created these 10 colored books, which I'm happy to see when I became chairman of UTM, somebody gave me a green book on governance. I kata, eh, green book, that sounds familiar. And then later I found out, rupanya yang finance pun purple book eh. And so on. Then I realized, I think, I think Prof Zaini masa dia pergi jadi KSU, he must have taken from uh, this set of nila. On the other hand, I don't claim, for example, the green book is green because the original code of corporate governance done by Tan Sri Aris at Ministry of Finance was green. That's why I gave it green. So in other words, bila kita jumpa ilmu tu, actually it doesn't belong to anyone lah. We, we, we just take, we try to improve. Orang lain ambil, lagi bagus. It's okay. So, so this is among the things we did under the GLC program. We also, uh, the GLC program, Alhamdulillah lah, banyak, banyak literature that, you know, it created a lot of value and one key component was of the culture change was not just KPIs but you have to relate KPIs to accountability to performance and to reward actually and for that matter the opposite of reward is the not just the carrot but for example at the senior level they were on performance contracts kalau tak perform maksudnya to do to the, the mantra Datuk Fauzi is execute lah kamu sebelum kamu di execute kan lah terpaksa <laughs> not that we like to execute people but you know uh, they were well paid and I know the, the issue of uh, GLC salaries were always in the spotlight but you know there's no security or tenure, you start perform you're out uh, you know and, 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 and everything that is paid is actually the value created is much much larger uh, and so on right okay uh, this is in the realm of um, part of the execution Kazanah ni, we were, we were, you know, government owned. On the other hand, we have to be pragmatic. Sometimes we use government kind of instruments. For example, five-year plans. And that's typically not a market instrument. This is instrument of, of, a, of a state, what they call a state punya delivery. Eh? But other times we use the market. We list companies or when it's not appropriate, we delist companies. Right? Uh, you know, so... So knowing which cost for which cost, you know, how much and what timing, etc., is part, part of the whole secret or not so secret recipe, so to speak. Another busy slide, but basically part of the institutionalization, we track strategy, we have to track image and reputation, we track people, we track us as a learning organization, we track governance. Again, and very, very structured. Dalam bawah ni, we'll be like, I can't remember, 70, 80 specific projects being tracked on a program management basis. I think sama like Encik Izani is actually, uh, this is his field. Lah. He will track. So kita ada war room, ada macam-macam. Everything is tracked. Okay. Uh, this slide actually is to understand the Malaysian political economy, any political economy in the world always swings between Banyak the hand of the state or the hand of the market. You know, and this is a, a bit of an economics you know, slide. Lah. But basically, understanding this actually is very, very key. At the moment, we're actually in a period of uh, rather uncertainty because, because the politics is a bit uncertain, as you know, eh? and that's part of the VUCA study. Okay? And, and therefore, you, you have to, bukan kata H, but you have to know. So, for example, if you're going to make a major investment into, I don't know, high-speed rail project, for example, and you, you're thinking of buying the land around there, or indeed, it's our Pagoh land dekat the HSR punya, punya alignment, eh, Dr. Bobby. 
Jadi, okay. So what we do with that will also depend on whether ada ke tak ada ke bila the HSR project tu jadi ke tak jadi. Because different, you know, governments or different parties will have different ideas about it, right? Indeed, indeed, they they have different ideas. So that's why understanding this, you you have you have to understand and learn and how can you build uh, on kata optionality on the various scenarios. So for example, instead of going all out to develop the land, taro infrastructure for the uh, 90% of the whatever land we have, you do it modular, for example. Yang ni, that's the, the, the downside and the regret. So, so this kind of dynamic planning actually, or risk management, is a mindset. Dr. Eh? Razi, kita tak boleh. Kalau, so the easy thing to do is just redah. Eh? Another easy thing to do is don't do anything. But that's not the answer. Both are not the answer. Okay. Uh, it's about learning organization. Again, uh, I'll zoom, zoom, zoom through. Uh, this so-called exploit, explore, again, uh, this is a bit uh, busy slide. It's actually in business, and I suppose in running a university too, uh, there's basically two paths when you when you do things like you either what they call organic organic means incremental growth you know uh, for example if you're you're already doing uh, you know engineering faculty mungkin next year tambah 10% or you tambah you know some some existing um, programs or, or courses but the other inorganic route is maybe instead of just doing that maybe we say i don't know we open a branch campus di Saudi Arabia sebagai contoh. That's not organic lah. That, that's not organic eh? That's not linear. That is something going on. Or, we say we're going to open a medical faculty. Right? So that's an inorganic punya route lah. So similarly, you can, you can both are, are quite different skill set by the way. You have to recognize that they're quite different skill set. They both can be good and profitable but they can also in, uh, kalau buat tak betul, they can also be a big problem lah, can be disastrous as well. Okay. This is actually a slide trying to highlight uh, the issue of bias, cognitive bias. Uh, and sometimes cognitive bias, as you know, there's a lot of literature, eh? this has become fashionable around neuroscience and thinking and behavioral sciences. Eh? I think some of you may be in this field. Uh, certainly in the corporate world, in the investment world, this became fashionable the last 10 years. So for example, confirmation bias. You've heard most of this. Eh? Confirmation group thing. For example, semua hanya ikut ni. So a core process for someone like Kazana would be how to invest. And then how to divest, right? So for example, setengah orang pandai invest. Tetapi sayang. Tak, tak reti nak, nak divest. And then the share price goes down and then the moment has passed, right? So di Kazana, we have a quite well-known lah that we have seven gates. Before you make an investment, there are seven gates. I wouldn't have time to go through the gates, but suffice to say, inherent within this is actually things like we want to hear dissenting views. Okay? Because you're trying to overcome it. So, so every dissenting view is recorded throughout the gate, eh? So, first of all, beyond a certain stage, every proposal nak invest ke tak nak invest, there is what is called a blue team and then there is a red team. The red team punya kerja is to punch holes in the blue team. Then you worry because kadang-kadang I scratch your back, you scratch my back. So these roles are reversed sometimes. Eh? But there are other mechanisms to make sure ni. The most junior person punya voice has to be recorded. Actually, so that dia tak takut walaupun boss ni ni. And there, there has been cases that some refuse to sign. They get to know, I don't like this deal, or this is grey, you know, this is tak betul. Others, okay, we respect and we record such that you go to the very last gate, which is the board. Uh, it's recorded. Santan je lah, banyak kan, banyak-banyak muka surat, but it's there. As the managing director of Kazana, a fund that was worth about 40 billion US dollars, people are shocked to find out that my limit that I can invest on my own is zero. Okay, it's not something I feel is a weakness. I, in fact, I'm proud. Because what it means that every investment in Kazana, that means the board or even the chairman of the board, for example, the chairman of the board is the prime minister. Dia pun zero juga. 
nobody can make any investment actually. But we already calculated every year we only make about less than 100 investments, the big ones. Eh? It's okay, we're not going to miss anything because you've got to go through this whole process. Of course, as the CEO, my, my voice is very big and I, I can and you know, things and don't go through the knees because you know, I basically disagree on some of this. It will stop. Lah. Uh, but this is important because then it's known that nobody can lobby orang ni, orang ni, or even myself. Actually, you can't you can really lobby me. There's a whole system that, that looks at this. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, this last section, actually, I want to try and bring all that we've covered so far to the case for UTM. This is a slide saya ambil daripada Datuk Fauzi punya presentation at the strategy retreat. Many of you were there. Uh, Datuk Fauzi, I understand this is part of our ambition 2025. Yang bawah that up to is the 10 departmental strategies. And we've chosen three uh, what we call niche strategies, right? To complement and supplement this. Fine. This I just wanted to recap. Eh? How do we relate all to this? Eh? Uh, here are some of the major uh, things that we go for. Rankings, of course, is not everything, but rankings mean something. Lah. Certainly, there's focus on this, and it's important. Uh, but more important, perhaps, is the, the various things that lead up to the, to the ranking. Eh? And Dr. Fauzi made the case that actually some of it, there is a EC, tu, substance kita dah ada dah pun, but somehow the packaging mungkin kurang compared to some of the other universities, right? Uh, sometimes it's the other way around, perhaps, eh? that, that we, we, we have to beef out the substance. But certainly, to my mind, research impact, uh, you know, clearly com both commercialization dengan uh, impact on society, uh, GE, as you call it, graduate employability. I would ask the question, not just quantity, I think we have to ask the question because that is now the issue of not just employment, but underemployment, as you know, therefore the, 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 the quality of the employability of the employment, actually. Then the five big things, which Dr. Fauzi, I understand this to be more around you know, governance, people, service, and we, we spend some time talking about culture, and so on and so forth, right? So transforming. So this is about transformation. It's transforming for what, what you call the future ready workforce, agility, governance, uh, core values, and so on, right? This slide, actually, we, we challenge uh, uh, the risk management team because, again, eh, saya masuk tempat baru, for me, lah, baru macam UTM, ni, I look at the risk side first because I always try to think about tadi, eh, part of that buka punya, nak lawan buka punya methodology is cover your downside. So we have to understand where are we most vulnerable. And this exercise is not just one person. This is a debate. People should know that the, the risk committee will look at it. And this is what is called a risk matrix in terms of both uh, probability and impact. Lah. So as the color code shows, color dalam red to they tend to be high. So you, you can see among the risk categories here to highlight is you know financial stability, um, economic crisis, COVID, uh, pricing, the ability to price, uh, unable to supply specific material, cyber security, and so on and so forth. Right? But at the same time, uh, I think I, I also highlighted some additional thoughts. Uh, again, eh, this is not necessarily saying this is a, a problem or an issue. I'm, I'm looking at this from a system standpoint. I cut what are the kind of torpedoes, and I would encourage you, actually, I wanted to land on this for discussion, actually. That if you ask yourself, there's one lesson from today about managing VUCA, is accept that VUCA to other, and therefore, how do we manage? So one, one question to ask is what kind of VUCA would represent a torpedo that will really hit us as an organization, right? This is in the spirit of managing the downside to allow us to be ready to capture the upside, right? Yang pertama that I can see is integrity. I think we, we have to ask. Us as a university, imagine, eh? reputation, the good name is built over decades. Yeah, over a very long time, eh? Nama, eh? 
Tapi bila kalau it can be lost actually quite quickly and this has happened as you can see you know all over the world major organization Enron for example famous dia punya board tu for example you you name it like you were to pick the most eminent board in the world you be hard pressed to find a better board than Enron but yet they fail completely fail disaster completely hancur habis this may not happen to a, to a institution like like uh, UTM insyaallah or any other university in in Malaysia on the other hand you have to ask whether it's plagiarism whether it's financial scandal whether it's corruption we have to look at this collectively right you have to ask what kind of disruption covid is an obvious one now it's obvious huh? at that time i suppose nobody uh including my you know, nobody could have predicted right financial dependency and sustainability because we may think ni and i've been sitting down with haji ben trying to understand the system kat sini eh haji ben eh? petang ni kan kita ada board meeting because government budgets are tight we continue to be tight possibly for quite a long time and government punya indebtedness as well. it's not just our government lah many governments are going through this therefore what can we do uh, to make sure that we are able to handle this lah how much can we handle right number four is stability and continuity and this one usually berkenaan policies leadership uh hopefully kita relatively uh, near uh datuk fauzi eh? stable but we hear about other universities ala le tukar pun you know a big change happen yang ini and kadang-kadang ada politik lah interference lah macam-macam eh? i hope not but we have to ask because this is can be very disruptive i think this has also happens in the corporate world you know once in a while ni tukar pun macam-macam eh? business exposure and business development kita banyak aset tanah in particular and this you have to be careful because my view is that and and you know I'm a corporate guy we did all kinds of property development but that's our job and 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 the troops are lined up to do that i'm not saying UTM or UTM holding tak boleh buat possible but we have to be very careful actually because our job is not necessarily to make profits or to do business our job is gedung ilmu right you do research and you educate people and build good graduate etc et that's our core business uh, so but betul lah tu kita tak nak membazirkan all these opportunities but you have to be very very careful uh, there's a technique in the financial world we call it pay off diagrams eh? so pay off diagram is very simple lah you, one one line ni is actually amount the the y y axis right the x axis is basically time lah so so a good pay off diagram is you manage the downside that it doesn't go to negative and then you're downside some businesses for example dia punya downside ni can be any number and this kind of business i never like for example construction you may think construction boleh buat duit but construction there is something called liquidated damages eh? that means kalau you tak deliver bukan aja you kena cover the cost of the contract kadang if, if you don't read the fine print carefully it is also what your client lose out you're supposed to deliver a building by a certain date you tak deliver dia boleh minta duit kat you so then your pay off diagram can go down to any any number eh? or, or very big number lah and this actually uh, happened to some of our companies and i shut down some of these you have to because because uh, then they kata oh once in a while we make eh, betul lah tu on the other hand if this happen this is how you manage this so with uh, property development the land itself usually the land has got very little cost uh because historically like in our case is given granted apa semua kan but what you put on the land that number can actually be a big number because especially if you take a loan nampak eh the risk profile of this thing changes so that i i do ask uh you know how do we handle that Number six, I think, okay, I just wanted to name, eh? this is an open discussion, about diversity. So we recognize, Datuk Fauzi, uh, University Awam memang, kita, that's how it is, the culture, apa semua, I faham, no issue. But at the same time, diversity is not just about race and religion, but about other points of view, age, nationality, etc. Okay? 
because especially in the field of knowledge, knowledge development, eh, di mana if we look back throughout history, some of the great centers of learning, whether Cordoba, for example, in, in, in Andalusia, or Damshik, the great court of Damascus, had diversity of views. Okay? Masa zaman, is it Umayyah? Eh? Kerajaan where, where, you know, the, the, the grand mosque of uh, Damshik, uh, one of the great imams, I think, was there. And these people came from all over, different mazhab, different apa, semua orang debate. Eh? And I think as a Gedong Imu, we need to think how to create situations of diversity. Tadi uh, pengacara majlis introduced me and I happen to be a budak Malay College. Malay College as the name suggests, Malay lah. And all boys, right? Other, I see in history there were two girls. I don't know how they landed that, but there were two girls. <laughs> they landed, uh, you know, very popular, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so, the, the, so the MCKK, because I think my exposure to the non-Malays, for example, were through my teachers. And they were amazing teachers. For example, uh, this gentleman who passed away, Mr. Tan Gim Ho, was my math teacher. He all out. They tak give up on kita orang, even though some of us gave up on ourselves. Lah. They betul-betul, you know, cari kita sampai. And he later we found out they forego promotion just to teach without adopt Melayu. Eh? I mean, you know, and and at that, you know, you don't really think about race at that time, but amazing guys. So anyway, he, uh, when I was in a position to do so, I recommended him for the pingat to Tuanku Sultan Nazrin lah, because they perak. Eh? And Alhamdulillah, Tuanku Pekenan. Lagi, because I think he truly deserves. There's another gentleman called Mr. Liu. Mr. Liu ni special branch officer in the 70s. Because masa 70s ni, the communist threat was still there. Kuala Kangsor ni kira quite uh, apa, black, not black lah, grey area lah. But dekat-dekat dengan black area. So Mr. Liu was a special branch officer, tapi dia ni basket, suka main basketball. So somehow he started coaching us, budak-budak Malay College, basketball. Which is not a Malay game, right? It's more of a Chinese game. After a while, in Perak, budak orang Cina dekat New Village ni started, oh, you know, this budak-budak Melayu ni main basketball became a novelty. So he crossed this bridge. For those of you who went to SBP will know lah, this Hamdan Tahir, I think MCKK, dah menang 19 kali lah. Sorry lah, I know the number I'm going to and Sorry. And, 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 but, but actually, Mr. Liu ni went on to coach the national team, menang gold in SEA Games, and Alhamdulillah, dia pun, you know, has been honoured by uh, Sultan apa semua ni. And these two gentlemen are actually the only non-Malays who are inducted into our old boys association. But they were a very positive uh, thing. So I think for the university, we need, my, my personal view, eh, I hope I'm not treading on any sensitivity, Dr. Fauzi. It's actually the mindset. Macam mana, I know you are all excellent. I think, oh, wow, nak masuk. UTM, eh? you need four flat for many of the courses. So, so obviously standards are high. But honestly, whatever experience I had is actually a lot of exposure from the dahan. Actually. You throw excellent people into whatever situation, chances are they will swim. They won't sink. The question is whether we throw them enough into those situations. It's something I think we need to ask. Because, because this is what builds resilience and this is what will build, you know, again, you know, the ability to... And, and after a while, you will know that they can stand ni, tinggal whether they've been given the chance and exposure. For us, we need to replicate. Eh? So, for example, industry linkages. You punya ni. So, I, I've been mentoring the group the uh, bigger session. Eh, so, I read, I read through all their, every word of their background and what they went through and where they, they've been through. Eh? And I think we really need this because the world is very buka eh? and we, we need to do that. And finally, is to get this performance and delivery culture. But as Dato Fauzi mentioned, Master Master Convo, be kind but be firm. So Adil pun kena, Ehsan pun kena, dua-dua kena ada. And I'm sure you will find that balance. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, this, uh, I won't go through lah. This is the sum total of whatever, almost 40 years of working experience of and link VUCA lah in various forms, especially during my time because Zana. This to me is what, what matters lah as pillars of strength to not just defend, but create conditions that you can, on kata KPDM, right, seize the day. And finally, 
going back from the risk punya unit saya pinjam ni ah dia kata your plan number one number two universe punya plan saya bawah ni lagi best you can actually turn it to your advantage i think in this case dia kata probably boleh you can go fishing you can sell the rock you can make into adventure course ke and so on and so forth lah. so therefore from suka duka to suka buka lah basically is my message thank you very much assalamualaikum Terima kasih Tan Sri atas syarahan perdana itu tadi. Jadi saya buka kepada soalan sekiranya ada dari pihak audiens. Ada Kalau tak ada saya bacakan dulu soalan daripada Webex. Daripada Zack. Saya rasa Dr. Zack. Okey. Uh. <laughs> Talking uh, talking about millennial mindset in a VUCA world, could you kindly share your experience in mentoring or preparing millennials for leadership? What works and what doesn't work? Thank you, Tanshri. Thank you. I, I always struggle with this a bit. Can you explain millennial ni berapa tahun? Eh? Okay. Alamak, Tanshri tanya saya. <laughs> I think there, there, there is some, there's some apa, difference of views, but roughly, what, they lahir like 2000, Tansri. So meaning to say, they are actually below 2000, you know, yang after 2000 ni is considered strawberry generation. It's a strawberry <laughs> ni dia macam soft. Because <laughs> my children, we have four children, and I think they are all, some are millennial, lah, and then, but one, one is actually year 2000. So millennial is 1990 onwards, eh? Ada. Well, so, uh, Tansri is about the age of um, 30 to 40. Uh, Current 30 to 40. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Then, then I, I, I believe please. Kalau 30 to 40, yeah, I think we, we groom quite a lot because Anna, we groom quite a lot. Uh, I think first of all, I think susah nak generalize lah. It's not probably not really fair to generalize, but 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 we have to lah to an extent, right? So I'm technically I suppose a baby boomer, tetapi kita bukan dekat Amerika, kita dekat Malaysia kan? So we went through whatever lah. Of course, my parents' generation, uh, you know, one is Arwa, my mother stay around. They will talk about you know makan ubi kayu zaman Jepun, nasi lemak. So, sen, lima sen, etc. Kan? We all heard this, kan? Sama ada our parents or our to and opa and so on and so forth, right? So, I think there's some general generality. I think the 30 to 40 year old punya group pula, I would say uh, at one level, I think it's probably not fair that every generation kata, oh, the orang ni, you know, manja lah, whatever, this kind of thing. Eh? I don't think that's quite right lah. That's my general view, first of all. Although there are some elements, because they, are, they, they can only be experienced whatever is before them. If they don't go through that hardship, now what do you want to know? you not throw them into hardship. They don't, they don't go through war. We, I didn't go through war, but you know, when we were small, for example, you know, most people, mana the orang, for example, the concept of going on holiday. You know, I don't know. Masa kita orang lupa mana ada holiday. We, we holiday means balik kampung. Eh? Pergi jumpa saudara mara kan? That kind of thing, right? Adalah once I remember my, my late father, both my parents were teachers. My late father then work in RTM. Kadang dia pergi business trip. Dia kena pergi RTM pinang kita ikut je lah. Family dapat lah ikut. You know, duduk hotel, this kind of thing. But very seldom. But today, uh, you know, not even orang kaya. I think fairly middle class family. People go you know, breaks, this is the time of the year, right? Uh, kalau dulu balik kampung means tidur lambak, apa semua, now orang duduk hotel eh. Generally orang pergi duduk hotel, banyak-banyak hotel. So, so of course, every generation a bit different. I would say, I think that younger group, I notice, yang petak, if you talk about ESG tadi, dia punya uh, feeling on environment sebagai contoh. I think it's quite strong, which is good. Which is good. The younger group and below millennial ni, even stronger actually. <laughs> and uh, I get lectured by my daughter about how I brush my teeth. <laughs> etc. etc. Again, as you know again. Uh, so I think there's always hope that 
every generation has a possibility of renewing Islam, right? And I think that that is good. Uh, I think the trick is actually as as they tend to grow older, including my children, they tend to get you know kadang as you grow older, they get more complacent, more cynical. But I worry about actually and tadi to integrity. So when now I have more time, I get invited a lot lah, to give talks to many many groups, and I always press look. You know, this is you must not, you must remain true to yourself, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, that part too. Lah. So if they have integrity. For 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 nila for inherently what they shouldn't be doing corruption apa semua ni. Secondly, kalau kalau dia, uh, you know, have a feeling for other people, that means you know a social conscience and environmental conscience, that's good. But they are, but it's also vuka and competitive out there lah. I notice the stress level seems to be high. And sometimes you know, diorang pergi sekolah bawa bagus, you know, university bawa bagus lagi stress because competition they compare to each other then actually it's about purpose and self-worth harga diri and so on and so forth you must understand why why are we on this planet eh? and that's where actually the spirituality quotient that it too contain of course the the family support etc eh? and inshallah i think our kids i'm convinced our kids are just as good as any kids around the world, possibly even better i'm convinced 100 percent i think itulah my 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 observation I hope you, it's not, kita kena expose, exposure to penting, that's what it And you must go out sometimes outside your comfort area. You know lah how we are kan, orang Melayu, sometimes when we go overseas, kita duduk, kelompok kita je. Me included lah. In fact, after a while, for for one or two years, kat UK, I sengaja, uh, with some very close friends actually, these are very close friends, we were housemates, we actually resolved we're not going to see each other for one year. And and I went off and stayed in dengan Mak Saleh tak apa. I just wanted to to learn lah because the logic was uh, you pergi jauh-jauh this kind of thing. You you have to go out. Uh, you know as long as we we are secure in our base of what we are lah. Kadang je lah orang muda kadang you know terpesong sikit-sikit juga lah as long as you don't go too far out. Eh. That's my view at least. Okay. Okay thank you Tan Sri. So just google millionaires uh, 25 to 40. Yeah, oh, okay. 25 to 40. Okay. I Gen Z. <laughs> after millennial is Gen Z? Uh, after millennial Gen Z. Oh, okay. You, 9 to 24. You're telling us your age now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, ada lagi soalan? Daripada yes, uh, Dewan? Okay. okay. Um, uh, from my country. So, uh, very good old uh, lecture. Yeah. Uh, if you were to choose in the time of Buka, uh, which one, which of these two words would you choose? I mean, either one. Uh, cruel or empathy? Sorry, cruel or? Or empathy. 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 And why? Because I try not to be cruel you know, under, <laughs> under whatever situation, buka ke tak buka, we no, should because, never be cruel. Uh, because it sounds like, um, yeah, in, in the time of buka, uh, yeah, uh, especially in the time of pandemic, you did mention about mental health just now. Thank you so much for highlighting the, the issues of our mental health. Yes, it is, it is, uh, it's a reality. Uh, but unfortunately, there's some, some part of it in which we, we need to be cruel to be kind. and cruel. Yeah, cruel in order to be cruel kind. to be kind. Lah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So, yeah, yeah, uh, kalau cruel to be kind versus empathy also depends how to define empathy again so to me yeah that's why they call it cruel to be kind because you're being kind actually and and that part you know bila you nak gah nak sergah bila you nak apa nama urut sikit really depends uh, those of you who are counselors will know lah you cannot one size fits all again macam kita handle because psychology you know the people that we're dealing with with this uh, I think it's situational. Uh, so, kalau emergency, for example, you know, if somebody that tak sedar di, uh, I you know, God forbid, a drug addict, whatever, you you have to be cruel in that sense. Yeah. Then, nak buat jono, you know, or your own, you know, God forbid, if it's somebody you know very well, your your anak even tell dia buat tak betul, then you you have to be, you have to be firm in order to be kind. Tadi kan? 
Uh, so, so I think it's situational. So knowing what is situational in what proportion, that's called wisdom, uh, as opposed to <laughs> a bit of experience. Eh? Done, done. Sorry, eh? a bit general answer to, to that question. Yang mau bagi tanggung, so if I may ask you, please. So, uh, it's just that I wonder, uh, after all the hard work and everything, and gone through, uh, at the daytime. So, how do you, um, recover yourself? So, I I know that sometimes when you are at the highest point, you tend to be a bit lonely. You you yeah. Lonely, not to say that you don't have family, but then you're a bit lonely because there are a lot of things sometimes that, that you you can you simply just uh, borak borak tell others, you know. Uh, so how how do you overcome that, and how do you make yourself go forward, go forward day by day? Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think that I suppose the phrase suppose is lonely at the top is quite true. Uh, on the other hand, ta juga actually. You know, in a way, uh, honestly, the the several things, right? Uh, there are slides in there somewhere, lah. Kalau yang UTM lead actually ada yang my slides on leadership, so I would draw three three triangles, right? Uh, this one you all pun dah tahu semua ni, tapi tak pula. The first triangle tu actually about development, lah, because people. Normally, gang-gang millennial jemput saya, saya kata, you all are the triangle. The 3A, the first A, and the fact that you all dah graduate, apa pun, you are the aptitude tu ada. Aptitude dah memang ada. Aptitude means, you know, a degree. But it's not just a degree. It's, uh, dia punya, ni lah, dia punya, you know, soft skills, macam-macam. Eh? So, that actually gets you in the door. How far you go up this triangle, so imagine one side of the triangle, is up to your attitude. And believe me, myself, Encik Izzani, and many of you, you know, CV hebat-hebat, kan? Masuk. Once you're in, actually, we don't look at your CV anymore. Lah. You graduate kat Ivy League ke, Oxford, Cambridge ke, is how you perform. And whether you boleh bawa majlis tidak, you know, that means you, 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 your teamwork, for example. Some people perform, but the, you pusing balik, tengok, oh my God, the collateral damage, that they do habis, ni orang ni marah, orang ni, you know, that, that's not the kind of performance you want, right? So that, so a lot depends on your attitude. There's a saying, as you know, uh, your character is your destiny, lah. I don't know who said that, but somebody said that, which is in a way true. How far can we go, quote, quote, unquote, far, whatever that means, actually depends on our, our character. Eh? And it's not just about integrity, it's not just about motivation, in fact, sometimes kita tengok orang yang aptitude bagus, degree bagus, partly because you know they come from a well-off family, they will be pergi tuition, apa semua ni kan. Uh, they go to the right schools, enter the right universities. But they may lack something very key to move up the attitude, which is hunger, drive, motivation. You know, how do you put this in somebody who never, who always had a safety net? So, orang yang ada safety net ni, they always lompat in such a way different when somebody who terpaksa lompat ni kalau jatuh, that's it, right? Different. And uh, this one, I've seen amazing cases where people with nothing and dia punya attitude dah syarat. But the third A is often the hardest. Back to your question about lonely at the top. When you get to the top of that so-called pyramid, so-called, first of all, it's overrated. But most people will be, those who get there, so called, their, their aptitude ada. Attitude ada. Tak syak, drive ni. But can you manage altitude or not? That's the third A. Managing altitude, eh? So bila you kat atas, you know lah, oksigen tak cukup, dia dah rayak sikit. <laughs> and I once had a, a privilege of talking to anak kepada Tenzing Norge. You remember Tenzing Norge? Tenzing Norge is the guy who went up Everest with, I think, Edmund Hillary. As usual, Mat Saleh yang dapat nama, but actually, probably the Sherpas, uh, have, the, the Gurkhas have been going up there for a long time before, <laughs> before Mat Saleh ni lah. But anyway, that, by the way, on Netflix, there's a very good, uh, have you seen 14 Peaks? Huh? It's a brilliant documentary. Dasyat, they bought 14 of the highest peaks in the world in the space of, Something like seven months. 
the previous record was, I don't know, 16 years or something like that. Okay, so, they were some local uh, Nepalese. So, talking to Tenzin Norgay, punya anak ni, apa nama dia, dia, dia something Norgay lah. So, anyway, they kata, actually, most accidents occur after orang tu dah sampai ke atas. You know why? Dia, dia lalai. Actually, dia lalai. And then they sleep. Sometimes tired lah. Dia penat pun ya. Exhausted. But, but actually, pasal dia lalai. I thought that was a brilliant uh, insight lah. In this actually from front address. And this is from a very experienced climber. Secondly, hubris. Which actually really kills. And hubris always kills. And as we know in our religion, we kalau Christianity, dia kata original sin. You know, there is a concept of original sin in Christianity. And yeah? they refer to Adam and Eve lah, with the forbidden fruit and all that, whatever that means. But actually, the original sin is Iblis refusing to bow down, right? That's the original sin. Dia tak nak bow, kan? Allah Ta'ala suruh, suruh dia ni, dia tak nak. Dia tu, pasal, dia, dia ingat dia, you know, dia lagi superior. Hubris is very, very dangerous. So, if you talk about it, it's, so therefore, knowing that, what are, if you so-called get up there, what are the things that you can do to try to minimize that risk, actually? So when you are there, orang ampu you, orang, you know, macam-macam, you know, which is nonsense. Uh, I think it was Kipling. Rudyard Kipling ni is a racist, the writer poet. Because he came from the colonial time. Tapi dia punya brilliant poem is very well known kan. Poem If. Some of you may have heard that. Uh, no, if, 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 macam-macam If kan. Kalau you Google If lah, like, it's a beautiful poem. You probably heard it before. But one of the things they kata, if you meet with crime and disaster, crime and disaster, and treat both of them as imposters, he used the word imposter, that means penipu. Dua-dua boleh tipu you. Kalau you jatuh pun, actually it's never as bad. Kalau you succeed pun, actually it's not so great anyway. Kalau kita ambil our rujukan, I think it was Imam Al-Ghazali, if I'm not mistaken, kata hidup ni antara sabar dengan syukur, cool. when we are in a, we hit by heart, Hard thing, kita kena sabar. Sabar means not passive, right? Obviously, sabar kita usah. And when we, we we do well or seem to do well or dapat rezeki, syukur. Guess which one human beings tend to fail more? The syukur part is harder. I think lah. Sabar pun hard lah. Not, not to demean sabar ni tadi. But I think kita punya physiologically and so on, our, our body has mechanism to pain, you know. Pain is actually much early warning system lah. Then we adjust. But when it comes to syukur, actually, it's not easy. Antara kesyukuran je ni lah. You, know, you, you have to try to be grounded. So di Kazana, for example, we instituted a practice called Kembara Kazana. So for one week in a year, our office is literally in a, not the ivory tower, in the twin tower. KLCC kan, duduk tu kosong. Kazana, semua orang datang minta, you know. I kata, eh, hey, korang ni, including myself lah, have you gone to Kuala Pilah or not? Have you gone to Kuala Lipis or not? Have you gone to Kuala Nerang or not? To be honest, I also haven't gone to some of these places. So I said, for one week in a year, I go out and all of you must go out on public transport only, incognito, I pakai cap, pakai sleeper, just walk and go and see the country. Uh, you know, for example, I will go into Tenaga National Melaka lah, Bandar Kabar tu. Duduk, I duduk, I akan tengok kaunter, I kata, oh, actually macam ni. Masa board meeting tu, dia kata macam-macam ni. Eh? Oh, our guys will go to Telekom Malaysia dekat Chowkit. Dia pretend macam mystery shopper kan. Dia pretend to open a Unify account. So, in fact, yang pergi ni Dr. Farid lah, board member of Telekom, my special officer. Said, Farid, kau pergi, you try. So, dia call balik CEO, Tan Sri Zam lah, Tan Sri Bro. Hancos, you your script, you know, no one is following on the ground. On the other hand, I went to, I remember going to CIMB, the, uh, the chocolate you got on the same trip. And I walked in and asked to buy New Zealand dollar, knowing full well there's no New Zealand dollar in a branch like this. Lah. But the girl, the lady was super helpful, fantastic customer service. I text the punya boss, lah, that time Datuk Sri Nazir Razak. I said, Jay, you got a gem of me. She got promoted next week. So, rezeki dia lah. Mesti chopper kan. After a while, that mythos, I tak datang, orang kata, oh, Tan Sri Azman datang nanti. 
So that 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 somehow that spread lah, or that there's a rumor that they may come, Kazana may come this week. Actually, tak dat, not necessarily datang lah. It's only one week in the year. And we will compile the whole thing bagi kat Perdana Menteri actually. At the end of the year. That helped in a very small way. It keeps me a little bit grounded lah. Then yeah. So some of our guys that are gallivanting all over the world, kata tak pernah pergi. Kata awak ni Kazana National. You know, some, something like that lah. You know, that, that's other factors. Then actually, the support units lah. Obviously, family, spouse. Whatever I'm doing, I think impossible if not for my, my dear wife. And by the way, fully now, lah, today is my 30th wedding anniversary actually. So I'm here with you. <laughs> so new ring, new ring. <laughs> so alhamdulillah. <laughs> So, tiga puluh, tiga puluh. On this very day, I married a Batu Pahat girl, actually. So, not quite, quite nearby. <laughs> so, I hope I answered some of your questions. Thank you. Assalamualaikum, Tansri. Nanti lagi satu, Cik Izan. Hi, okay. Uh, Rahe Izan, you're from UTI and Pasal Affairs. So, I have one question. Uh, what are the distinctive um, similarities and differences um, between you overseeing a public university like ours and your involvement with the corporate sector? Yeah, I think the, the the I think the differences are probably obvious. I think one corporate is obviously uh, profit oriented per se. Eh? The mission is defined as profit. Although over time this is no longer necessarily the case. So for example, bila Kazana saya masuk tahun in 2004, the the prevalent philosophy in business was something called shareholder value creation or even shareholder value maximization. That means you think about maximizing shareholder value means maximize profit. Today, we talk about stakeholder value. Okay? Uh, so, so when we did this two keys, three keys, ni, actually, masa kita on start buat 2004, 2005, we were going against the grain, actually. Uh, that, that wasn't the kind of prevalent thinking. But subsequently, the, the Lehman crisis, global financial crisis, macam-macam crisis lah. So I think the world has come around because of environment. So, so in many ways, for example, corporates today, if you don't have within your corporate a sense of mission based on purpose that, that drives and delivers more than just profits, you will probably not get the best talent, including the millennial study. Because people want to feel that they do meaningful work lah, in that sense. Eh? Kadang saya risau juga. Saya risau juga because if you think about it, work should not be your, although I'm probably the wrong guy to say this lah because as I said, our hours were a bit infamous. Sometimes, you know, work life balance, but, but I somehow tried to incorporate it back because people should actually lead balanced lives, right? In one, one of my other triangles in those slides, I kata actually the triangle ada tiga masjid lah, so to speak. Our first masjid is the real masjid lah. Kita punya, kita punya agama, eh? kita punya din. Right? So how we serve our creator, etc. But our second masjid is literally our family. That's why orang Melayu kata, bila orang tu kahwin, dia bina masjid. Why? Because it's sacred. Because this is the place of Quran kata apa, rest and love and mercy, etc. Kan? Rahmah. Kan ada ayat eh? Surah Al-Hajj, they're not mistaken. And then the third masjid is actually Kalau macam kita treat your work your as, as an ibadah, as an amanah, eh? whether you buat university ke, you buat corporate, to me that secondary, doesn't matter. But the key is this, kena balance. Kadang orang terlampau banyak, one or the other pun tak, tak kena. Eh? Including work, eh? work is a new mantra. People work, 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 sampai ni, sampai, you know, uh, including family. Actually, you talk about rest tadi, uh, lady who asked me, Actually, the rest is, kan, kan ada doa, kita sejuk. Eh? When we go home, sejuk. Eh? So I used to, sometimes people ask, lah, it's a bit personal, but I can share. Lah, eh? But you all know. In fact, when I first started at Kazana, strangely, I got along very well among others. I, I was helped banyak mentors. Lah. Somehow, and mentor, mentoring, I do not really believe in formal program because somehow people will gravitate. Ah, macam ni, tak apalah, you ada formal program, you panggil, I try lah. Uh, today, actually, Cik Zani will know at least 30, 40 people, many, uh, I won't name them, lah. many are the major CEOs. Because they want semua nak buah saya dulu. For what it's worth, lah. I tak cari, tapi dia orang datang. So in my case, I had a few very good mentors. And one of them, strangely, that I got along is this gentleman by the name of S. 
Dan Abalan. He was the chairman of Temasek, a former minister in Singapore. He somehow got along. I don't know how we got along, but we did. So I asked him, Dana, he was a former minister, chairman, very, very senior guy in Singapore. What advice can you give me? I suka minta nasihat. If I see orang tua, or people older, they kata, Azman, you're going to be very busy. And my biggest regret was I did not see my children growing up. Because this was the period yang budak you know, at that age. Of course, you know, my wife, who, uh, apa nama, Prof Hamdan punya colleague dekat Miami, eh? she did architecture. In fact, when we got married, she was earning more than me. I'm, I'm very proud to say. She gave up a very promising career as an architect to take care of the children. And thank God for that. Uh, so, saya, I remember I would go home at midnight, literally, practically every day, banyak kerja. And you just sit down for five minutes watching your, your children pido. As you know, they, they got, you know, at that, they, they dah kurang nakal lah, maksud tu dia dah tidur. Eh. Cases like angels. And then you baca lah, baca Quran sikit, tiup-tiup sikit, this kind of thing. And that one actually is therapy for me, but therapy for them. So, so, um, anyway, I just, I, if you don't mind, I just wanted to share that because, so this idea of balance study too is very, very key. And then there's actually within that, of course, time for yourself, right? Your rest. And I knew I did not have enough time to sleep, etc. Tetapi, that's where I make up for, you know, other things. Lah. Room temperature, the thread count of the bed sheets. <laughs> Everything got to be right lah, because, you know, you just don't have time. You have to make up with quality. Lah. Sorry, this is a bit detailed. So, uh, anyway, those are... Some feedback or what is worth. Thank you. Okay, terima kasih Tan Sri. Kita ada lagi soalan daripada Webex tapi uh, agak kekangan masa. Jadi soalan ini akan disampaikan terus kepada Tan Sri. Boleh? Sila, sila. Nak sekarang? Boleh. Boleh eh? Okay. Dari Siti Khadijah Hamzah. Hamzah. With a constant change in VUCA world, how do you manage the talent in order to ensure the sustainability of the business? Thank you, Tanshri. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's probably a good place to learn, talent. Eh? Because tadi kita sebut, we discussed, we covered quite a lot. The slides are rather busy. Lah. Apologize for that because they're actually not really meant for display. They're meant for reference. Eh? Banyak, eh? If you're interested more in the topic. But as I said, the one truly variable factor in all this is actually uh, people, manusia, right? So to me, actually, you therefore must try to, to get, develop, retain, grow the best people and the best teams that you can, okay? Now, fundamental to that, earlier you asked about cruel to be kind versus empathy, eh? Actually, again, like those are actually both sides of the same coin. You're not cruel to be kind, you must empathize. It's okay in the first place. And, and kala empathy saja, tampa, you know, tracking the wave at the right time and saying, okay, no, this is a red line, also doesn't work. But even more fundamental is what is your philosophy? And sometimes you have to think about it and you have to feel. One belief is actually setiap manusia ni, insan, has been created special, actually. All of us have been created special. Nothing is created in vain, eh, like Quran tu. And we all have something in us that is unique, actually. The tragedy in life is that a lot of us don't don't actually unlock apa yang kita punya keunikan and special things. Sometimes it's out of, uh, apa, mungkin lack of opportunity lah. So, so do you believe that some people are born in? I believe that every talent is equally spread, actually. And equally doesn't mean equal. Tapi equal to means orang ni special in certain thing, orang ni you know, kurang special in other thing, but actually they're meant to do something. Those who are in a position to organize talent, actually their job is to give opportunity to allow them to find this in a way that is fair, but also progressive. Eh? It allows organization. And this actually is a, is a big challenge. And Zani, I think, can, can tell you 
once I, you know, I, I grew up the so-called attitude and triangle that they, to wherever so-called I naik to, I suppose because of my technical skills as an analyst, up to the moment, again, so, so I was head of research, I menang award and so much lah, you know? But once I got there, actually, it's actually about how you manage talent. Adakah orang tu will work for you? You know, how far will they go? So, for example, in the corporate world, macam-macam lah, kadang you end up in court, bergaduh, apa semua. Sadly lah, you don't want to gaduh anyone, but but if someone picks a fight, you have to fight. Nak buat ni lah, kita pun terpaksa lah, bukan kita suka. So, there were some CEOs, for example, who were harassed by their chairman. I have to go out and defend. I think the, the term we use in Kazana, we said, you know, no, no, much like US Marine, kan? Kalau there's no bo bodies, we cannot leave behind. Eh? You always go back there and collect your, whoever has fallen, your injured, apa -apa, you can never give it. You mati even that well. Because you know why? Otherwise, the next guy may not go and fight anymore. And so on. So it's about honor, it's about macam -macam lah. So, so really about talent, though, is actually a good place to end because at the end of the day, you're not managed buka. These are the seven pillars of strength. That people part of it is actually inside all of this. Lah. It's actually because that is the one true variable. Lah. And maybe that's a good place to end. But it's also UTM lead, Dr. Fauzi. Eh? And Dr. Fauzi, of course, you know, I'm fully, uh, you know, the board <laughs> working with him. Uh, Inshallah, kita sama-sama lah. Kita terukai nanti. So, once again, on my side, thank you lah. I hope you found it useful. Tak lah ya. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum.